And I'll give the floor to the members of the Security Council. I'll give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. I'd like to thank you, Madam President. The Russian Federation has convened the emergency meeting of the UN Security Council because of the extremely dangerous development of the situation in the southeast of Ukraine. We have pointed out on several occasions, including in this chamber, that the terrible actions leading to the coup de force by the self-proclaimed Kiev authorities are threatening once and for all to tear the fragile fabric of the mosaic-based society. The authorities do not want to listen to those who do not accept the imposed dominance in Kiev of national radicals and chauvinist Russia-phobian anti-Semitic forces, seeing in them a threat to their human dignity and to their very lives. The grotesque Russophobia and embedded hatred has become the norm in the Vechodna Rada as well. This is what a few days ago was said by, by one of the MPs from the chauvinist uh, Union Svoboda or Freedom of Russian uh, inhabitants of Ukraine. I would have acted much more harshly. I would have just shot them. The enemy is prevailing in our land. They should have been chased out in 1654. These beings only deserve one thing, death. And that's the end of the quote. And you must note that this is said by a woman. Can you imagine what thoughts are churning in the head of her brutal compatriots? And this is not the most radical group in the Ukrainian political specter. Should we be surprised that the peaceful political protest and the request the, by the people of the southeast of Ukraine to listen to their aspirations was met by the Rada by draconic laws on long-term prison sentences uh, for separatism? Just two, year, two days ago showed that after our numerous calls to the Organization for an Inclusive National Political Dialogue, Kiev saw uh, some common sense. There was Mr. Atsinyuk, the prime minister, was in Donetsk, and he did not meet with the representatives of the protest, but he did say the right things. He talked about dialogue, decentralization, and his desire to find a way out of the uh, problem. But what is the situation today? We have been told that there will be restraint and there will be a peaceful solution to the situation found, bearing in mind the opinions of different groups of the population of Ukraine. And these have been confirmed by our Western uh, people. But on the 13th of April, the Verkhovna Rada appointed, uh, well, the appointed uh, president, Mr. Turchinov, stated that the Security Council of the country took a decision to start a full scale anti terrorist operation with the use of armed forces. And as apart from the Maidan people, the protesters uh, were not terrorists. There were no bulldozers used. And there were no cocktail, a Molotov cocktails thrown at anybody. But it's not fortuitous that actually the law enforcement agents were there. And now the Kiev authorities have to affect other areas of the country. So, according to Turchinov, the population in the southeast of Ukraine by the 14th of April has to stop the protests because there might be the use of armed force but the protesters opinions and interests have not been borne in mind we're not talking about them as a result of this there has already been bloodshed in the southeast and the situation is very dangerous a further escalation of this must be swiftly stopped the international community must require that the henchmen of maidan who took power in kiev to stop the war with their own people and implement all the commitments under the 21st of February agreement. The Western sponsors of the henchmen of Maidan, especially those who witnessed this agreement, and also the US, which is behind them, are bound to 
uh, stop this and to stop to make them disassociate themselves from neo-nazis and other extremists and stop the use of force against the ukrainian people and swiftly start a genuine national dialogue with the full participation of all regions in the interest of a swift holding of radical constitutional reform it is the west that will determine the opportunity to avoid civil war in ukraine some people including in this chamber significant do not want to see the real reasons for what is happening in ukraine and are constantly uh, seeking the hand of moscow and what's going on there, there's enough that is enough we must not it's enough by saying that we have uh, put our armies on the border of this country and can go to La Manche very quickly, that we have deployed agents coordinating the protests of the people in Ukraine. We need to understand that the southeast of Ukraine and the people there are very concerned about their future and they don't want anybody, especially the national radicals, to impose their will on them. Thank you very much, Madam President. Well, we called for this uh, uh, urgent meeting of the Security Council out of our concern uh, that uh, things are getting out of control in southeastern Ukraine and uh, that uh, the criminal uh, order which has been announced by acting President Turchinov to use military force in uh, southeastern Ukraine uh, may uh, signify uh, another major step towards the escalation of the situation which is uh, in uh, graphic contrast to the prior assurances we have received from uh, our Western interlocutors as uh, we, have been we have been discussing with them the steps which uh, need to be taken in order to overcome the political crisis in Ukraine and also to uh, try to take Ukraine out uh, of the uh, economic uh, morass uh, that country uh, has uh, sunk uh, in, uh, in the past few months. Uh, well, you have heard the discussion, uh, a, lot of, a lot of propaganda, but uh, I do hope that uh, towards the end of the discussion, uh, the, major, um, the major appeal coming from our delegation has sunk in, uh, that urgent steps need to be taken in order for uh, rec reckless uh, uh, things uh, not to be undertaken by the Ukrainian authorities uh, to... Uh, to, to dramatic consequences in southeastern parts of Ukraine. Um, Pastor Turkey, do, you, I mean, do you feel that any of your quote, Western colleagues are actually trying behind the scenes to say to, to ask the Ukrainian government not to enforce this deadline? And what's your thinking on the April 17th well, about, meeting? Well, about the deadline, I have no information because uh, this announcement by uh, Mr. Turchinov was made just a, f a few hours ago. Uh, in the days and weeks preceding uh, this latest development, uh, uh, we were under the impression that at least uh, uh, in the contacts we have had with the United States, uh, Minister Lavrov with Secretary Kerry, that Secretary Kerry uh, was uh, uh, genuinely interested in uh, uh, fighting, uh, fighting uh, a political outcome. But uh, whether or not this is the case, we'll see uh, uh, very shortly. Uh, whether they are going to uh, to put an end to this uh, uh, provocation uh, from Kiev, uh, which has taken the shape of this uh, announcement that military force will be used in southeastern Ukraine or not, this is uh, this is their responsibility. They have uh, clearly built chaperoning uh, the powers that be uh, in Ukraine, the people who came to power after the coup uh, of uh, uh, February February 21, 22. So it's their responsibility. Uh, uh, to prevent the further uh, escalation of this crisis. Ambassador, you talked about a red button. Could you explain what you meant by a red button in talking to your Western colleagues? I, and also, if the Ukrainian, Ukrainian military does go ahead and moves in on the protesters, what next as far as Moscow I, is concerned? I don't, I don't recall uh, talking about a red button. At least in my Russian remarks, I didn't, I didn't refer to a red button, no. But uh, that, of course, would be... Uh, uh, would be a major escalatory uh, step if they do that. Your uh, Western counterparts suggested that Russia should pull out 40,000 of its troops from the border and also what they named as the thugs or uh, bullies from inside the cities. 
this is what their conditions are, what we heard from the Americans that the Russia should put well, you know, them well, out. First, first of all, those, uh, those uh, troops uh, uh, have been there for quite a while. They've been exercising there. They are on our territory. We have allowed all sorts of inspections uh, uh, which were there, including Ukrainian inspections, to make sure that uh, this is uh, uh, n nothing out of the, uh, nothing extraordinary about uh, the presence of, uh, of those troops there. Uh, as to other, you know, speculations about uh, uh, the, 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 the role, I mean, uh, it's again, I think it's uh, coming from the premise that uh, Ukrainians themselves would not have been able to do anything. Uh, about the very grave situation they found themselves in as a result of the coup uh, in Kiev and uh, uh, the radicals coming to power in Kiev. Of course, uh, Ukrainians uh, are able to do things, including organizing themselves, to resist what they see as a clear and present threat to their way of life. Thank you very much. Ambassador, what do you sincerely hope to happen right now? 